Welcome back everybody, I'm Ron with another episode of Classic Model Trains. Today I'm going down the DCC road and showcasing how I installed a Tsunami 2 Steam 2 digital sound decoder and a Chinos back shop can motor and flywheel upgrade to an old classic Mantua 462 Pacific locomotive. A few months ago I didn't have any Tyco Steam so the first Pacific that I bought I ended up paying kind of a lot for it. But as time went by, I ended up with having about five or six of them kind of laying around in various stages of repair. I found the Chino Back Shops can motor and flywheel upgrade on eBay and purchased it. I'd read a lot of good reviews that it does increase uh, low end performance and overall torque. Now, I'm not a big DCC guy. I've got a couple diesels that have uh, DCC and sound. And after about five minutes or so, I kind of get tired of listening to the sound drone on and I, and I usually always end up muting them. Well, since I like to shake things up a bit, I bought a $132 digital sound decoder, a $15 speaker, and about a $38 can drive update for a $30 Tyco locomotive. It seems like a lot of people like to talk bad about the Tyco line. And I'm just trying to spread the information that with a little bit of work, you can make these things into some fine looking locomotives and rolling stock. For many of us, they were our first locomotives or train sets, and they hold a special place in our heart and memories. So follow me and I'll show you how I did the updates and installations. We are going to start the disassembly process on this to upgrade with the new CAN motor and DCC control. First thing I want to do is get this boiler out of the way. Get these two screws out right here on the bottom. Get this screw out of here inside the smokestack. Everything comes right off. The little screw right here right beside this gear and it will take the motor out. There's also a little lock washer right there you want to keep a hold of and that is the original motor how quickly they come out of there and this is a good time right now to check all, all your valving to make sure it's working like it's supposed to everything's moving this one's this one's pretty stiff so I'm gonna end up oiling this up a little bit got these four screws loose so I can pull this bottom plate off and service up these axles here's a good example of the Mantua Pacific compared to a later production Mantua Pacific, mainly because the older Mantuas pre-1970 would have these bushings in the axles right here. So when you pull this out, you can see there's a removable brass bushing in here. And the newer ones, 70 and up, or when they changed their production facilities offshore, they re-engineered the frame and made it where there is no, there is no bushing in here. So it's just steel on steel compared to these ones, which would have been serviceable if you wore out the bushing, you could replace it and put a new one in. So I'm going to clean all this area out right through here, keeping these, these bearings in place. This valve gear doesn't turn as good as I'd hoped, but it does turn. I'm going to straighten out all these drive rods on it to get everything working as good as I believe that it should work. Well, I bent and tweaked and twisted on these, this valve gear until I could get this thing to roll just as absolutely smooth as possible. The instructions say that we've got to grind off this little part right here, this guy, and these two guys right there to make that all flat, to put the new motor on. The original nylon worm gear is removed by heating it up with a hair dryer and prying off the old motor shaft. It is reused on the new motor shaft. The new motor flywheel, flywheel shaft, motor shaft, and old worm gear are pressed together in a series of steps using a vise. This little motor mount right here, I ground it off on this one according to the instructions. The flywheel seems to sit right in that area on the motor as it sits up in here like this and it's like the flywheel could potentially rub on that. So that was ground away to do this motor upgrade. I'm going to leave these ones in place because it doesn't seem to be causing any interference with anything. Well, the destruction say to use some isopropyl alcohol, clean this area up right through here, make sure there's no oils on it, and then the bottom of the motor. The top of the motor has this black dot on it, the bottom of the motor. Clean all this up and then use this exact stuff. This is what the directions say to use. Gorilla Heavy Duty Construction Adhesive. Throw some scoob on the bottom right here. 
thick stuff. My goodness. Black dot facing up. Center the worm gear over the top of the gear right there. Make sure the gear, the motor is centered on the frame and then making sure that the worm, worm gear is centered on top of the drive gear. And also this is centered over the top of the axle. And then after you get this far, it says don't mess with it. Let it dry for 24 hours. While waiting for the glue to dry, I started on the decoder installation. The decoder I purchased is the Soundtrax Tsunami 2 model TSU-2200, part number 88407, along with the Soundtrax 810078 oval speaker. The decoder has very nice instructions on how to wire it up, with a simple diagram telling you which color wires do what. I am going to remove this tender shell, because that's where I'm going to put the speaker and the sound decoder at. little speaker here it's an oval speaker one watt and this is the tender and it fits really nicely right up in this area so what I've decided I'm going to do is I'm going to make a speaker grill right inside of this coal load right here with a 1 16th inch drill bit and I'm just going to drill it out like a little speaker you know like a speaker grill would look like in the coal I didn't really want to face it down because, you know, getting old, I need to hear as much as I can hear. So I'm going to drill this out right here and get this speaker mounted in there. So here's what the tender looks like after all the holes got drilled in it. If I lift it up a little bit, you can see the speaker grill from the light that shines. So I'm going to put the speaker in right underneath that. And it still looks pretty, pretty normal all on its own. So I'm just going to hot glue the thing in. Got it wired up, soldered up already. A couple little dabs here and there. Ought to, ought to work. I got some of this two-sided sticky Velcro. So I guess I'm just going to put the decoder down using this stuff. That way I could remove it. Sometimes when I need a little extra longer wires or something like that. I have waited 24 hours for the glue to dry. So now we are going to, I got the thing sitting in here, the decoder, and I'm getting ready to wire up the motor to this thing and give it kind of a test drive. The motor instructions tell me which color motor wire to solder into which post. Just like so. Get this draw bar hooked up in here. Get these wires kind of taped up some, and we'll see what we can do. The locomotive is picking up from the uh, right side of the track. Tender picks up from the left side of the track. So I'm going to put these down under here, just for now, for power going to the decoder. I'm not gonna go into great detail on programming the, the DCC decoder. There is an 80 page downloadable manual available from Soundtracks that's got just tons and tons of information in it. The decoder does come right out of the box with sounds programmed into the 23 sound function keys and a simple cab address of three. I did change the sound of the whistle to a USRA six chime and I added in a ton of echo. And also gave the bone stock Tyco Mantua some paint upgrades and highlights. Let's take a look at it and a listen. Well, this is what it looks like when everything's all completely installed back on it. We got everything wired up on it, wired in an LED headlight for it. And it really does have really good low speed performance on it. This is speed step two on my NCE power cab. And it can pretty much do this crawl just all day long. Let's get the body on it and show the whole thing off a little bit. And this is it with the body all on, painted some of the wheels, gave a little white striping on there. And the sound effects that they do, that is the dynamo for the headlight, which you can hear running a little bit right now, is just the air compressor.
course I don't know the horn signals that much so I'm not gonna be able to do the do them properly Whenever you want to reverse it, you hear the reversing rod or Johnson barb being applied. And it goes into the reverse mode. Track detector, mile code 372.3, no defect, detector out. That is the cab chatter that takes place on it all the time. It's got, it's got boiler blowdown on it. And you can also do individual or cylinder boil blowdown. You can also turn off cylinders. Once they've warmed up sufficiently. It has got more dang sounds than a person even knows what to what to do with it. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up and please consider subscribing to Classic Model Trains. Here's some recommendations on some more Classic Model Train episodes.